victor's crown You're my help and my defender You're my savior and my friend By your grace I live and breathe to worship you At the mention of your greatness In your name I will bow down In your presence fear is silent For you wear the victor's crown God and uh, welcome once again to Women's World. My name is Reverend Mrs. Veronica Ayuku and it's a pleasure to have you join me once more. This is the third edition of Women's World and I'm glad that you could join me. I want to urge you, you can share the link with your friends, family, share it with people so that they can also join us because I believe that what we are going to share is going to be a blessing, especially to us women, because that is the focus of this program. We talk about issues that have to do with women that affect women. So share the link, call a friend and ask a friend to, to just tune in uh, to our Facebook, to my Facebook page and uh, join me as we have this very wonderful and powerful discussion. I know it's going to be a blessing for you because I myself, it's been a blessing for me. So today we are talking about 
lessons from the life of a godly woman, the story of Abigail. I believe that a godliness is something that must characterize every believer's life, not just uh, women, but every believer. But today I'm, focus I'm focusing on women, godliness, the importance of godliness in our lives. And we will look at the story of Abigail because I believe that the story of Abigail uh, portrays that kind of life that as women, as women, we should live. So we are going to look at Abigail. But I want to read a scripture from uh, 1 Timothy 4 verse 8, which, which says that training the body helps a little, but godly living or godliness helps in every way. Godly living has the promise of life now and in the world to come. So godliness has a, a benefit for us. It is important for us that we live godly lives. I can say for myself as a woman that godliness has benefited me greatly. I have gained and not lost from being godly. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I don't make mistakes. But I have tried to live the way God wants me to live as a child of God. Even uh, before I became a Christian, you know, I was a very quiet person, you know, not... Uh, I was very self-conscious of myself because I was very tall and it's like, and skinny. So it's like anytime I go amongst people, I'm taller than everybody. And I was so self-conscious of myself that, you know, I couldn't mingle very well. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't used to talk a lot. So I was very self-conscious of my, myself. So I didn't have that kind of life that will say, you know, that kind of life of going to clubs and you know boyfriend that kind of thing i didn't have that kind of life but that was before i i got born again even before i got born again i didn't have that kind of life but when i got born again i realized that you know it was important as a woman to live a godly life and even as a child of god to live a a godly life the bible says in proverbs uh, 31 verse 10 that who can find a wife with strong character who can find a virtuous woman? It's a wife with strong character, with a godly character. Most women want to get married. Most women want to get married. I'm not saying every woman, but most women in their deepest, in their innermost being, want to get married. And the Bible says that who can find a wife with a strong character? She's worth far more than jewels. So, Every woman, I believe, must have a strong character. We must build ourselves in godliness. It is so essential and so important. Because for me, godliness has benefited me greatly. I am where I am because I chose to live a godly life. Not everybody lives a godly life. Some people claim to be believers. They claim to be children of God. They go to church every Sunday or, you know, sometimes even weekdays they are in church. But when you look at their lives, I mean, you will not be proud of them. And what I want us to do as women is to be able to build up that strong character, that godly character that will cause us to live lives that will be pleasing to God. So when I talk about godliness, what do I mean by godliness? Godliness is simply living a life that is pleasing to God. A life that is pleasing to God. And first of all, you must understand that godliness is not something that you acquire on your own. Godliness depends on you knowing God and having a relationship with him. You cannot just decide on your own that I want to be godly. As I used to, you know, when... Before I got born again, I thought, oh, I'm a good girl. I don't do this. I'm always with my books. I study. But that is not enough. I remember that when I was in secondary school, when I got to form three, I was not born again at that time, you know. And But I came back home during the holidays and I used to have dreams, constant dreams about the end of the world. I don't know where it came from, but I would just be... 
I would sleep and I would dream that the world was coming to an end and you know there was confusion all over and I didn't know what to do with myself and it was something that kept on coming constantly and I didn't know what was happening but then you know my sister was friends with with, uh, um, with Mama Rita's Crunchy and Christ elder sister and they used to uh, we used to live in the same area so he just, and that time Amarita had gotten born again and was on fire, was on fire for the Lord. And because I was having these dreams, I didn't know what to do. So I started reading the Bible. I was just visiting now and then I'll be reading the Bible. But I didn't really know what was happening to me. So when my sister told her that, oh, as for my sister, she's always reading the Bible. Oh, so uh, tell your sister to come and take her to, for fellowship. So she came and she she took me to Accra High School Fellowship. They used to have a holiday fellowship. And that was how I got born again, received the Holy Ghost baptism, and I started living for Christ. And I have never regretted living for Christ because I know that I have benefited more. So if you give your life to Jesus and live a life of godliness, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that any believer who is born again is a new creature. All things are past and all things become new. So godliness must be embedded in your lifestyle. And today I want us to look at a woman in the Bible called Abigail. We are going to look at her life and hopefully learn some things from it. Learn godliness from the life of Abigail. And the story of Abigail is found in the book of 1 Samuel uh, chapter 25. And it's a story of one of the most faithful and honorable women mentioned in the Bible. Definitely, she's a woman of integrity, a godly woman. And I believe that she's one of the people that women, we can learn from. We can learn godliness from Abigail. So who was Abigail? When you read 1 Samuel 25, Abigail was a married woman. She was married to a man called Nabal. And we'll read a little bit about this man she was married to. Verse 2 says, Now there was a man in Maun whose business was in Carmel. He was a very rich man. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was sharing his sheep in Carmel. This man's name was Nabal. And his wife's name was Abigail. Abigail was sensible and beautiful. And we'll talk about that. We'll come to that part. But, his, uh, but this man who was called Nabal was harsh and mean. It means he was wicked. He was a descendant of Caleb. Now let's talk about this man. Now the Bible says that he was harsh and mean. He was a very rich man. He had about... Uh, 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And I believe in that time, that was, that was, I mean, a big business that he had. He was a rich man, but the Bible says he was foolish and he was stupid and he was a mean man. He was wicked. And I, you know, sometimes I wonder, I don't know how Abigail came to be married to this man. But, you know, in those days, marriages were arranged. And sometimes, you were required to marry a certain person. So I don't know if one, this was one of the uh, things, it was an arranged marriage. And usually parents would want you to marry somebody who is very rich. And sometimes for us women, sometimes we set standards of people we want to marry. I want this kind of a person. And some of us women want rich men. Some people say, oh, me, I want a man with a house. He must have a car. He must have a job that brings in not less than, let's say, 20000 a month because I'm an, I'm an expensive woman to be maintained. And so sometimes you set your standards so high in your days, in the days of your youth. I want this person. I want this person. And so when you, as 25, you make those demands. As you get to 30, you drop some of them. As you get to 35, you drop some of them. And then it comes to a time that anybody at all who comes, you take the person. 
But I want to say that because of this, some of us women, we disregard uh, the young brothers who may not have anything. Maybe you look at him today, you look at his hairstyle. You look at the hairstyle alone and say, Kai, I don't need this kind of a person. You look at this man who is always taking Trotsky, always running after Trotro, chasing after Trotro. You don't want somebody who is chasing after Trotro. And so because of that, you go and look for rich people. You want somebody with a car. And that is where our problem lies. We enter into the marriage and within a short time, we find out that we are miserable. When my husband and I got married, he had nothing. I also had nothing. We all had nothing. But some of us women, we have nothing. But we want somebody with something. You enter into a marriage and you go with nothing and you expect your husband to do everything for you. It is a recipe for disaster. So my advice is don't go after riches. Don't marry a man with riches, just riches, you are marrying the person because of riches. Let me tell you, you will go into it and you will be miserable. Some of us, even before we get married, we, let, we, we are engaged or we are courting with a person and you put standard, you make demands. I remember I was, I was counseling a couple and then the man, uh, the man came complaining that the woman came to uh, his house. When she came to the house, and she was saying that um, before they get married, yeah, she, the man had to change some things in the house. It's like the TV was the old type TV, the box TV. They wanted to, she wanted a flat screen. And she was saying the curtains have to be changed. And we need to change the settee. And the man had a one room. And she said, oh, um, uh, you know, before they get married, they have to get a two bedroom. Because if she gets pregnant, the mother will come and come and stay in the house. So they need a spare room. And, I, and I'm like, you are not even married. And already you are making demands. You are not even married. And you are saying, I want this change. I want this change. I want this change. And that's what a lot of us young girls and young ladies do. And we never get married. Because we set the bar so high. I'm telling you, marry a man with a vision. Not a man with a television. That's what somebody said. He said, marry a man with a vision, not a man with a television. Because if you marry a man with a vision, if you marry a man uh, with a vision, ma marry a man with a vision, not a man with a television. Otherwise, you will end up watching the man with a vision on your husband's television. I'm going to say it again. He says, marry a man with a vision, not a man with a television. Otherwise, you will end up watching the man with the vision on your husband's television. Because the person that you see that is chasing after Trotro today is not going to be like that forever. I'm telling you that when I got married to my husband, we had nothing. He had nothing. He lived at Nima. And you know... He had nothing in his room. He lived with one other man of God. They shared their room. And when you go there, they had a bench. The only thing they had in the hall was a bench. No settees, no sofas, a bench. And then, uh, you know, usually I used to make fun of it that when you go and visit, sometimes there's a certain rat mouse that only comes when visitors are around. And you will see the mouse will come and perch it up there and will be shaking its tail. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> but that was the case. He had nothing. Nothing. But today, look at where God has brought us. So you can look at a person today and say that, oh, this person has nothing. And therefore, I don't want him. You never know. Look at his vision. What is his plan? What does he have? Is he a serious person? That is more important than what he has now. So as women, let's look at that as, as young ladies especially. Don't look at riches so look at the vision. Otherwise, you, you will be watching the man with the vision on your husband's television. So that is a, 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 a word to the wise. Hallelujah. So, still on the story of Nabal. Nabal, his name means fool, foolish man. That is the person that uh, Abigail had married. So, 
The Bible goes on to say, say that Abigail was beautiful in appearance. It says she was sensible and she was beautiful. Beauty, they say, lies in the eyes of the beho beholder. But beauty, it is necessary for us as women to dress nicely. For the married women, some women, when they marry, they stop dressing. When they are courting, they are always concerned about the way they look. They are nice, nicely dressed. But as soon as they get married, then they walk around the, the house anyhow every day with a cloth tied around their waist or their chest. And they, they, they you know, because they've gotten what they want. They've gotten the man. And so that is all. It is very important that you maintain yourself as a woman. Some of us, when we get married and you have a child, one child, two children, three children, and then you leave yourself. You leave yourself. You don't take care of yourself again, again and you grow fat. You just grow fat. But you can maintain. I mean, it is true that all of us, when we, we give birth, we put on weight. And it is normal. I mean, it is normal. But you can try as much as possible to maintain yourself. You no, know, Eat well and then maintain yourself. Go for walks and all that to make sure that you are very... A fit and that your husband would you see you and appreciate you and love you because you know when God created Adam and Eve after Eve was created the Bible says Adam was impressed when God presented man to he said wow this woman is beautiful this woman is looking nice that is why it is important for us as women to dress nicely to look nice be decent it is very, very important. Be decent. The fact that we are supposed to dress nicely doesn't mean that we should expose ourselves as women. Because sometimes, you know, women want to follow the trend. We want to follow the fashion and dress in a certain way. I want to read this scripture from 1 Timothy 2, verse 9 to 10. It says that, I'm reading from the God's Word version. It says, I want women to show their beauty. See, so women, naturally, we are beautiful. We are colorful. I mean, when women enter anywhere, I mean, there's beauty, there's color to it. We make places look nice. We, can you imagine a church without women? The place will be so dull. It will be so dull. When the women come to church, that is when it is lively. Because when we come, we dance. We, you know, every time you see when there's dancing, it's always the women who go around and go and dance. The men, the men are so stiff. They are so stiff. They don't want to move their body. They are just solid standing there. Only few men, you know, actually go out and dance. But the women are colorful. We say the amens. We are lively. We will take a handkerchief. These days, because of COVID, we can't wear the handkerchief handkerchief but we can still dance and make the place lovely make the place so you know uh, enjoyable so women add color to every event we make the place beautiful so we have to dress nicely it is important so he says that i want women to show their beauty by dressing in appropriate clothes appropriate clothes that are modest and respectable that are modest and respectable. And I want to stress on that one. A godly woman will dress modestly and respectably. Let me continue the scripture, then I'll come to that. It says, their beauty will be shown but by what they do, not by their hairstyles or the gold jewelry, pearls, or expensive clothes they wear. This is what is proper for women who claim to have reverence for God. If you claim to be born again, if you claim to be a child of God, the Bible says that their beauty will be, show, will be shown by what they do. So your beauty will be shown by what you do. But before he said that, he said that we, I want women to show their beauty by dressing in appropriate clothes that are modest and respectable. So your clothes must be modest and respectable. You must dress nicely, but modesty is the key. We have to set the trend for the world to follow. 
The church must not follow the world. We must set the trend. I don't dress because it is fashionable. I dress to suit me. I dress to look nice. The fact that it is the fashion doesn't mean that you should also do it. Does it look nice on you? Is it modest? Because, you know, all kinds of things. Because these days, they say when you dress, you have to show a little cleavage. So, you have to dress and, you know, show the cleavage. Show a little cleavage. Let people see who said that. Who said that? And sometimes, people with a lot of breasts, you see that they cut their things so low, showing all their breasts. And sometimes, people are even uh, bold enough to bring it to church. They are bold to wear it. They don't feel shy. They are confident. And they come to church and they are showing their cleavage. A godly woman must dress respectably. I was watching something on Facebook. I saw something. No, I think I saw it on WhatsApp. Some, I think it was in Nigeria. And there was this young lady who had dressed in a certain way, short dress. I mean, very short dress, exposing herself. And so as she was going then, one guy came to pull, like, you know, pull her dress and was, like, making fun of her. I'm not saying that is right. It is wrong. The fact that somebody has dressed that way doesn't mean that you should make fun of the person or, you know, do all kinds of things. No, it is very wrong. But I'm saying that when you dress with Respectably, you don't get such reactions. You don't get such people, you know, people making fun of you or doing all kinds of things. It's not right. It is wrong for anybody to do that. And I will condemn anybody who does that. If somebody dresses that way, it doesn't give you the right to go and do all kinds of things or make fun of them or, 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 or do all kinds of things against them. It is wrong. But as a believer, as a child of God, you don't have to give the chance for anybody to even say anything like that. Dress appropriately. If you are going to, you are at the beach, and you wear your beach wear or whatever it is, well, you are at the beach. But you can't wear certain things and bring it to church. Or even take it out in town. It is not good. You should dress modestly. You should dress nicely. That's why I'm saying I don't dress according to fashion. If it is fashionable, but it is not modest, I'm not going to wear it. If it is fashionable, but it's showing all parts of me, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to wear it. I'm going to wear something that looks nice on me. And sometimes, too, depending on your body shape, you cannot wear certain kinds of dresses. Because if you wear it, it exposes you. So you have to dress appropriately for your shape and for your size and for the way you are. Dress appropriately and look nice. So dressing nicely is very important for a godly woman. I think that you should dress nicely. If you are godly, it doesn't mean that you should always wear long dresses, long sleeves, and every time you should, you should, you know, no, I'm not saying that at all. Dress nicely, nicely, but be modest. Modesty is the key. And sometimes too, some women dress nicely, but their character stinks. You know what I mean by that? The Bible says what we read, First Timothy. It says beauty will be shown by what they do, not by their hairstyles or the gold jewelry, pearls or expensive clothes they wear. Some people dress expensively, but their character smells. It stinks. So anytime men come around them, they run away. You will repel men. It's like men come to you and they can't, they can't, they caught you for a while and say, Hey, this one I can't tell. I can't tell. I was, there was a song, a very funny song that uh, I heard some time back. And it's in Gan, which says that, Oyawo uh, Jatabi Ole. <laughs> it means that you've gone for a, a, a jata is what? It's a tiger, right? Or a lion. I don't know. One of them. It's either a lion or a tiger. And that you've gone for a child of a tiger or a lion and you are rearing that child. 
and he was making fun more or less of, of uh, guys or men who go for women that are wild wild women it's like women that can roar women that can fight women with bad character and some of us the reason why we are not getting married is because of our character it's not because you are not beautiful you are not nice In your character when the men come they run away they run away because number one you are demanding money you demand money from them as soon as they come and then um i need to i need to you are not even married though you are not married you are not married and then you are asking for money oh for my hair i need to go and do my hair my hair is very you know it's it's not very good so i need to go and do my hair so um i need money for my hair how much 500 ghana and then some of us are proud enough to say that me i'm, a, I'm an expensive girl i'm an expensive girl so you know so I need money for my hair. I need money to um, go and buy this. I need. You are not even married, and you are making demands. They will run away. And if I'm a man, me too. I'll, like I will run away. I will run away from you. Not married, making demands. And some of us will say, "Oh, come and take me out. Come, come and uh, let's go out and go and eat. Let's go to KFC. Let's go to." Uh, papaya let's go to you know a chinese restaurant every day you are making demands let's go here and go and eat i need to buy a shoe you know i need a brown shoe to match my brown bag and my brown dress i need this i need that they will run away they will run away from you because they cannot meet those demands especially that's why a lot of us are looking for rich people because the young men don't have the money even the money for the engagement and for the wedding is a problem and then you are making demands of them when you are not even married and that is a problem so i think that we must calm down as women calm down be modest be modest be modest just come down to your level come down to your level me i don't take trotro so you and your fiance every day she has he has to take drop in for you he has to take uber or uh, yango or whatever boats or the other ones that are there anytime you are going to church then they have to come and pick you with a, a car because you can't take trotro or we have to take taxi look we've all been through the trotro day so we used to chase trotro i remember that i used to there's this a uh, trotro the bone shaker the bone shaker, the one that you actually climb. It's not just the trotro that you, you know, you, 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 you just put in. This one is like the bone shaker, the wooden track. You actually have to climb it. We used to chase it to run and climb it to, to, to go to church. Chase trotro and sit in the trotro. And I remember those times, these days the trotros are even nice. Those times they had that trotro that you face each other. I don't know if they are still uh, <laughs> in fashion. You one side sits here, another side sits here. You face each each other, and sometimes the the trotro driver will come. The mate will come and say achiaya achiaya. It means move, and people don't want to move. So what then? When the car starts moving, then the trotro will the mate will tell the driver na mo no. It means step on the brake. And the driver will step on the brake and everybody will move whoo, to one side. Then there will be space. So those who don't want to move, once the car moves, everybody will move whoo, like that. And then there will be space for people to sit down. We did all that. We used to chase trotro and everything. But today, this is where God has brought us. So you don't have to despise your small be beginnings. I said, woman, don't be demanding. I don't want this i don't want that and you don't take trotro and some of us young ladies we don't know how to talk when a word comes out from your mouth it's like a bomb you speak anyhow you talk to people anyhow and so when the men come they run away because you don't respect the words come some of sometimes some of us say that oh me as for me I'm free. I'm a free person. You know, I say what I want. You know, I'm me. I, I just say it. If I don't, I don't keep things in me. So 
when it happens i'm 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 plain plain that's what they say i'm plain plain it doesn't work that way that's why you are still not married that's why you are still looking and you are still not married because of character 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 it is necessary it is important as a woman your character is important abigail was a woman of character unfortunately i don't have much time so i will continue next week next week we'll continue with this particular topic and i will show you how abigail displayed or showed her character as a woman and because of that she was blessed godliness is profitable it is gain when you are godly you gain you gain you gain from it so i want to encourage encourage us as women first of all women who are not married and are seeking to get married godliness is what will attract the man godliness it knows it's not your lipstick it's not just your lipstick or your nails your long nails sometimes i see the nails and long nails with different colors i'm not saying it's bad you can do the nails it's good i can keep those nails on sometimes i wonder how people are able to keep the nails on and do cook and uh you know uh, sometimes even putting on a chain and thing i'm not able to do it and when i do the nails within three four days it it breaks i'm unable to keep the long nails but some people are able to do it and it's good it's okay there's nothing wrong with that you can do the no long nails it's fine but let it show also in your character because that is what will attract godly men some of us say that oh the men that are attracted they are all these kind of men they are not godly it's like they are men that go to the club and they are in the club i don't attract the good men it's because of character what you do attracts a certain kind of people towards you so when you are godly you will attract godly men godly men will come so let that character let it be that character which is on the inside and not just your dressing not just the way you dress your lipstick your hair it's good to do it i have lipstick on today i have makeup on today my my hair i've cut my hair very short and it's very i mean it's very easy for me very convenient natural hair very short and very convenient i never thought i would enjoy it like that but i'm enjoying it especially when there's heat and you have to put on the wig and stuff like that sometimes you just want to go like this so i'm enjoying it when i want to put on the wig i put on the wig there's nothing wrong with that but let's go beyond the outward dressing and let it be the inner man a woman of character let the words that come out of your mouth be pleasing let the words that come out of your mouth be words that uh, are soothing words that encourage words that you know benefit people and not words that kill some of us where the one word comes out of your mouth and it's enough to scatter everybody so i want to encourage uh, you as a woman that let that character of godliness be seen in you not just in the appearance of your beauty but also in deed and in character and i tell you if you portray that godliness there is benefit in godliness i am a testimony i am a testimony of god's benefit upon my life as a result of godliness i'm not saying i'm perfect i'm not perfect i have my own weaknesses but in spite of that because i desire and i i love to live a godly life god has blessed me i can say that god has blessed me in a certain way in my life i never thought i would get to this place but because of godliness godly living god has brought me this far and it is my prayer and my desire for every woman i desire for every woman to live that kind of life that kind of godly life to live that kind of life that is pleasing to god and i can assure you that if you live that life your heart's desire shall be god's will god will want to ensure that whatever is on your heart whatever desire you have in your heart he shall fulfill it i'm praying for you i love you so much i love you every woman out there and every man watching me because i believe men also love to watch this program but especially to the women out there i love you 
And I want to encourage you and tell you that in spite of all the challenges, if you trust in God and live godly, God will ensure that you come through successfully. God bless you very much. And I want to say thank you for joining me once again for Women's World. Next week, we will continue still with uh, the story of Abigail and look at how godliness was portrayed in Abigail's character. God bless you very much. Don't forget you can join me on any of my social media handles on Twitter, on Facebook, Veronica Ayuku, also on Instagram, Veronica Ayuku, and on YouTube, Reverend Mrs. Veronica Ayuku. This uh, video will be available on YouTube after this program. I'll make it available so you can go to my YouTube page, like my YouTube page, uh, subscribe to the page so that every time I post a video there, you can uh, receive an alert and uh, you can watch the video. Also, you can send the link to your friends, my YouTube page, you can send the link to your friends so that they can also watch the video, watch it over and over again, listen to it over and over again, and I believe it will be a blessing to you. God bless you, and I love you very much. See you again next week. Bye-bye.